and then we are done. So just like before, I think this way is actually easier than the one before. Oh. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to our video. We are going to do some differential equation exercises today once again and today I would like to talk about one differential equation you might um, see once in a while y prime being equal to y over x but the whole thing to the nth power where n is element of the real numbers and I would like to consider cases today and also in the next video. Next video is going to be a special case of this thing right here. And we are going to solve it in various ways today, just like before. And I would like to start off with the easiest method at first. So why not distribute this nth power into everything at first? So we end up with y to the nth power over x to the nth power. And don't forget, y prime is nothing but dy dx. And the easiest way to solve a differential equation like this is to, well, divide both sides by y to the nth power not equal to zero and then integrate both sides with respect to x. So, what does it look like? Well, we just end up with, um, on the one hand, the integral of y to the negative nth power. I'm putting it that way because that's easier to integrate for most people if you write it like that. dy dx integrated with respect to x and you can introduce some kind of substitution to get rid of those dx's or you can cancel them out if you're a physicist or something is equal to the integral of x to the negative nth power dx and integrating stuff like this is really quite easy so what we are going to end up with on this side we are going to end up with, with 1 over 1 minus n times y to the 1 minus nth power plus some algebraic constant c, let's bring it to the other side and add it to the other constant, is equal to, well, basically the same thing. 1 over 1 minus nth power x to the negative of uh, 1 minus nth power, this way, <laughs> plus some arbitrary constant c. And what we can do now? Well, we want to solve for y. That's our goal in solving differential equations. So we can multiply both sides by 1 minus n. We don't want it to be zero, so maybe you can already see the contradiction. If n is equal to one, we would land at a contradiction. So that's next case we are going to consider. So now, y to the one minus nth power is now equal to, well, this and that is going to cancel out. So we have x to the one minus nth power plus this term times some constant c is just some other constant k. And now we can take the one over one minus nth power on both sides. So that we end up with y being equal to x to the 1 minus nth power plus k to the 1 over 1 minus nth power. And this right here only holds for n being element of the real numbers but without 1. And 1 is our special case today. And yeah, be, before diving into this number 1 case, I would just like to present you one or two more ways of solving something like this. So the next one is just some um, uh, sneaky rewriting of the things we have done before. It's just dealing with this like it's a Bernoulli differential equation. So remember the formula. What we want to do is we want to multiply both sides by y to the negative nth power because this right here is n. And also we have to multiply it by a factor of 1 minus n. So at first we are going to end up with um, on this side we have y to the negative nth power times 1 minus n dy dx being equal to 1 minus n x to the negative nth power. Okay, that's all there really is to it and if you take a closer look, this thing right here is exactly nothing but dy to the 1 minus nth power dx being equal to this chunk 1 minus n x to the negative nth power. And now we can integrate both sides with respect to x and then we are done. So it's basically the same thing we have done before. And you can introduce a new variable. For example, you can say um, if this thing right here confuses you, uh, let u be equal to y to the 1 minus nth power. So you can do this if you like. And then we end up with an integral of du dx integrated with respect to x. Well, this thing right here is just going to evaluate to u basically plus some arbitrary constant c. But what is u? This is just y to the 1 minus nth power. And this is equal to this thing integrated with respect to x. So we end up with 1 minus n over 1 minus n times x to the 1 minus n plus some arbitrary constant c. And 
Well, <laughs> this thing is just one and now we can raise it to the one over one minus nth power. So we end up with y being equal to x to the one minus n plus some arbitrary constant c to the one over one minus nth power. And then we are done. So just like before, I think this way is actually easier than the one before and now we are going to deal with it in a different way. So this next one is going to take a second longer than the ways before, but, but it's a really cool way. One of my most favorite and most creative ways. So if you take a closer look, y over x to the nth power is indeed a function of y over x. So this is a function of y over x. And this thing right here is exactly the formulation for the Euler homogeneous differential equation we have derived before. So setting y over x being equal to set, we can equivalently rewrite this as z prime being equal to 1 over x times f of z minus z. And what is f of z? Just z to the nth power. So this is quite cool. We can plug this definition in. So z prime is nothing but 1 over x z to the nth power minus z. And now we can divide both sides by this term right here, not equal to 0, and then integrate with respect to x. So we end up with an integral of dz over z to the nth power minus z. You can introduce a proper substitution to get rid of those dx terms, or you can play physicist. Just don't do it in your axioms. I, I really don't care, but, but your professor is going to give you negative points if you just play physicist on your axioms. It's being equal to the integral of dx over x. Integrating the right-hand side is actually quite easy. It's just going to evaluate to the natural log of x plus some arbitrary constant c. Okay, and how can we solve something like this? This looks quite ugly. I'm going to give you a little hint. Let's factor out z to the nth power in the denominator at first. <clears throat> so we end up with an integral of dz over z to the nth power, and this is just 1 minus z to the 1 minus nth power, being equal to this. And integrating this is actually quite easy. We can introduce proper substitution. So let u be equal to 1 minus z to the 1 minus nth power. If we differentiate that, what are we going to get? <coughs> the u is nothing but. So we are going to get rid of this constant 1. So negative 1 minus n, tracking the exponent down and reducing it by 1, z to the negative nth power. Don't forget your d z. And what is z to the negative nth power? This is just 1 over z to the nth power. So we have this thing right here actually, this is just this, so why not divide both sides by, we, we can distribute this negative sign into here, so dividing both sides by n minus 1, let's put it that way, du over n minus 1 is our expression for this dz over z to the nth power. Plugging all of this chunk in, we end up with, okay, so bringing this constant to the outside, 1 over n minus 1, integral, and now just du over u, is going to evaluate to 1 over n minus 1, natural log of u, but what is u? Well, u is exactly this thing right here. So this is equal to 1 over n minus 1, the natural log of 1 minus z to the 1 minus nth power. Being equal to all of this, natural log of x plus some arbitrary constant c. And now we can multiply both sides by this thing right here. So we end up with natural log of 1 minus z to the 1 minus nth power being equal to, well, now we have n minus 1 times natural log, so we can bring it into this natural log as the new exponent of x. So natural log of x to the n minus 1 power plus this chunk times c is just a number constant, so let's call it k. And now we can use the exponential function on both sides and then we are basically done. <laughs> so we end up with 1 minus z to the 1 minus nth power being equal to, well, we can use the exponential property to break this up into x to the n minus 1 power times some i schlange i snack. <laughs> okay, and don't forget what our z actually is. z is nothing but 1 minus y to the 1 minus nth power over x to the 1 minus nth power. And now we can multiply both sides by x to the 1 minus nth power. We don't want it to be equal to 0. And let's see what we get. So on the one hand, we end up with x to the 1 minus nth power minus y to the 1 minus nth power being equal to, well, x to the 1 minus nth power times this. This is going to be x to the 0th power. This is just 1. And, well, 
we have this e snack right here left equals to e snack. Okay, and all that's really left to do is to add this on both sides, this y term, subtract this constant on both sides, then we end up with a new constant minus e snack. Let's just call it, um, I don't know, capital C for example, or kappa, I, I don't really care, and then raise both sides by 1 over 1 minus nth power. So we end up with our standard result, y being equal to x to the 1 minus nth power plus kappa. <laughs> I've never used that before, 1 over 1 minus n. So that's all there is to it. It took a second longer, but I think it's quite cool. And now we are going to deal with the special case finally. <laughs> So we are now going to consider the case when n is equal to 1 because you have seen before that we would run into problems eventually if we just would use 1 in our um, formulas that we have derived. So why not set n equal to 1? So we are going to end up with n being equal to 1, y prime being equal to y over x. And now we can treat it as a special case of the Bernoulli differential equation or whatsoever. I'm just going to use the easy technique this time. We are going to end up with 1 over y dy dx being equal to 1 over x. And now we can integrate both sides with respect to x. On this side we are going to end up with the natural log of x plus some arbitrary constant c. And on this side, well, introduce a proper substitution or something, you end up with the natural log of y plus some arbitrary constant c. You can bring it to the other side, blah, 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 as always. And now we can just exponentiate both sides. That means y is now nothing but, and this thing right here is now x times e schlange if you exponentiate that. So we have gone through this process a lot of times. Just watch my theory videos and you will see where this comes from. Um, yeah, well, and that's basically it. So, so this right here is the special case. Um, I just wanted to discuss it because it's disgusting. No, it's not. Um, yeah, well, I, I hope you did enjoy this quite long exercise video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, take a look into the description. There will be a link to my Patreon and up until the next video, can I find something cool? Um, have a... I don't know. Oberflächenphysik des Festkörpers. Day. See ya.